Despite the Trump team's efforts to push the federal classified documents case until after the 2024 election, Judge Aileen Cannon has finally settled on a trial date of May 20th, 2024. This is six months beyond what the Department of Justice had sought in that case with a December 11th date, but at least six months earlier than the Trump team was seeking, which was effectively an indefinite delay, but certainly after the 2024 election. And while both sides had to compromise here, this is more of a loss for Donald Trump than it is for Jack Smith. Barring any further delays to the trial, would a May 2024 date effectively means is that by the time the 2024 election rolls around that November, voters will head to the polls knowing definitively whether they're going to be casting their ballot for a convicted felon or not. And at the end of the day, that was precisely what Donald Trump was trying to avoid. And look, I get that Trump supporters are a cult, that they don't care what he does, that he could shoot someone on Fifth Avenue and not lose any votes, sure. Trump lost by 7 million votes in 2020. He may have the most loyal and adoring fans in the world, but he needs to broaden his base of support if he's gonna win. It's not the intensity of your base's love for you that wins you an election, it's getting more votes than the other person. And right now, Trump has a very clear voter base problem in that it's not expanding, it is contracting. And I'm not gonna claim to be able to predict the future here, but I feel like I could say with some degree of certainty that going into the general, a possible convicted felon isn't gonna be the persuasion tool that Donald Trump is looking for for those suburban moms and independents whose support he will need. These elections are won on the margins, and let's be perfectly clear, this trial date is doing Trump no favors in terms of delivering him those crucial final voters. Consider this too, Trump will see that May 2024 trial date and think to himself, Great, just a little more of a delay and we can push this thing until after the November 2024 election. But he'll run a massive risk if he doesn't manage to get the full six month delay. Let's say he only manages to squeeze out another four months of a delay on this. Now it's September 2024, the entire country is in full election mode, everyone is paying attention, and the closing message for Donald Trump's campaign is effectively the fact that he'll likely become a convicted felon only weeks away from ballots being cast. If you think James Comey simply announcing that Hillary Clinton was under investigation months before an election was disruptive to the candidate, wait until you've got a conviction in federal court. Something tells me that this isn't exactly the closing message that Trump would be looking for. So Trump and his team are now officially playing with fire. Any further delay and they risk making the entire election about Trump's possible conviction, which is not to say that it won't be already, but at least it's clear that fewer people are paying attention to politics in May of an election year than they are in October of an election year. So would we have preferred a trial in December of 2023 like Jack Smith had requested? Of course. Is it nonetheless a win that we're looking at a trial date before the 2024 election? Absolutely. Now let's be clear, Trump's effort to try and push this thing to some indeterminate point in the future was doomed anyway, regardless of how much of a lackey this judge was, because of the Speedy Trial Act of 1974, which Jack Smith referenced in his filing submitted in response to Trump's delay request. The filing read, any discussion of setting a trial date must begin with the Speedy Trial Act of 1974. The very first sentence of the act forecloses defendant's proposal here. In any case involving a defendant charged with an offense, the appropriate judicial officer at the earliest practicable time shall, after consultation with the counsel for the defendant and the attorney for the government, set the case for trial on a day certain so as to assure a speedy trial. The defendants chide the government for seeking an expedited trial, but in doing so, they have it exactly backward. A speedy trial is the foundational requirement of the Constitution and the United States Code, not a government preference that must be justified. So that was it. That right there was justification enough alone not to grant Trump his delay, because the law literally demands a speedy trial meaning that the Trump team's request to expressly not schedule a trial flies in the face of the law, which, in retrospect, is pretty fitting for Donald Trump. Now, of course, it's certainly worth noting that the reason that the Trump team wanted to delay this trial was clear. Their hope was that Trump would win the 2024 election and then use the levers of government to absolve himself of any and all accountability. Maybe he pardoned himself, maybe the 25th Amendment gets invoked and the vice president takes over and pardons Trump for him, maybe Trump relies on some corrupt attorney general to scuttle the Department of Justice's own case against him. Whatever avenue he took, the overarching strategy was clear. Trump wasn't looking for a delayed trial, he was ultimately looking to kill the trial. Of course, the likelihood now that Trump will be able to accomplish this goal is slim. Again, that's not to say that Trump won't try to further delay, but he's playing with fire if he does. And of course, let's not forget why the Trump team is so desperate to avoid going to trial in this case. Because Trump has no defense. Because the fact is that we know that Trump stole classified documents, that he refused to return them when he was asked, that he defied subpoenas from the National Archives, that he had his lawyer issue a false attestation claiming that all the documents had been returned when they hadn't, that the FBI eventually executed 
executed a search warrant that turned up everything he pretended not to have and that he was even caught on tape admitting to having classified documents. This was him. They presented me this. This is off the record, but they presented me this. This was him. This was the Defense Department and him. Wow. We looked at some. This was him. This wasn't done by me. This was him. Yeah. All sorts of stuff. It's pages long. Look. Mm. Wait a minute. Let's see here. Look at that. Yeah. I just found, isn't that amazing? This totally wins my case, you know. Mm -hmm. Except it is like highly confidential yeah. <laughs> secret. This is secret information. But look, look at this. You attack, and Hillary would print that out all the time. You know, <laughs> send it, email. No, she'd send it to yeah. Anthony Weiner, yeah, yeah. the pervert. Um, by the way, isn't that incredible? Though? Yeah. I was just saying because we were talking about it, <laughs> and you know, he said he wanted to attack Iran and what. He's in the papers. Wow. This was done by the military, given to me. Uh, I think we can probably, right? I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see. Yeah, we'll have to try to figure out. A, a, yeah. See, as president, I could have declassified yeah. it. Now I can't, you know, but this is yeah, classified. Now we have a problem. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. It's so cool. I mean, it's so, I'm look, we here and I have a, and you probably almost didn't believe me, but now you believe me. No, it's, I believe It's incredible, you. right? No, they, hey, bring some, uh, bring some cokes in, please. And let's not forget, all of this is happening amid a raft of other legal issues for Trump. Aside from this federal indictment for stealing classified documents, he's likely hours or days away from indictment in the highly anticipated January 6th case at the hands of the Department of Justice. He's already been indicted in the Manhattan DA case for his illegal hush money payouts to Stormy Daniels, among a number of related charges. He's awaiting indictment in that Fulton County, Georgia case for pressuring Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger to find 11,780 non-existent votes for the express purpose of stealing the election in that state. He's awaiting indictment in New York Attorney General Tish James's $250 million civil suit against him, his kids, and his business for fraud. And he's contending with yet another defamation lawsuit from E. Jean Carroll, which was recently amended to include more disparaging comments that he made. So Trump can try to bargain and deal, he can introduce little delay tactics, and pull stunts left and right, but none of that is going to save him from the legal reckoning that he's facing. If he really wanted to avoid all of these trials, he should have maybe, just maybe, opted not to be a criminal from the start, but given the fact that that is impossible for him, now he'll have to deal with the consequences of his own actions. Trump wants to lead the party of personal responsibility. What better way than to finally take some himself? Before you go, I need some help. Please subscribe to the channel and do your part to help grow the progressive media ecosystem. I don't do sponsorships or paid ads, I won't ask for money, but just subscribing to this channel goes a really long way and it helps get the message out to more people. The subscribe button is right here on the screen. You can also subscribe to my Spanish language channel, which I made to reach those crucial Spanish speaking voters. That link is on the screen too. And finally, if you want to listen to my audio podcast, you can follow that link as well. Thanks so much for watching.